How we doing, how we doing? This is Destination Denver, Colorado, and you've asked, I'm here to answer. Where would I live if I moved to Denver, Colorado in 2023? Well, I'm gonna tell you, starting right now. All right, this is Destination Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Jimmy Everts, and listen, if you're interested in learning all the ins and outs, pros and cons to moving to or around Denver, Colorado, then this is a channel for you. So that subscribe button and notification icon you see on your screen, make sure you click on that as I'm dropping new videos for you each and every week. And as much as I love to have a little fun here on camera, I'm also a licensed mortgage broker covering the entire state of Colorado and team with some of the state's most talented realtors. And we're helping people move here each and every day. So the number and email you see on your screen know that I am always the person, answer your phone calls, answer your texts, answer your emails. They're winning if you need me. Now that we have that fun-filled stuff out of the way, let's get to what we're here for. And that is, if I was moving to Denver, Colorado in 2023, this is where I'd live. Now, let me preface up front. This is going to be a very lighthearted conversation. I'm not going to bombard you with a bunch of stats. I'm not going to bombard you with a lot of specifics. I'm going to talk about different communities, different areas, where if I was moving to Denver this year and I had different goals or, or different types of atmospheres that I want to live in, where would I move to? So having said that, if I was moving to Denver and I wanted to live in or near the city and I wanted to be kind of in the heart of things, I wanted nightlife and restaurants and, and walkability and the city parks and all of that, I would look at two neighboring neighborhoods in downtown Denver called Cap Hill, Capitol Hill, or Uptown. Now these two are separated by Colfax Avenue. Cap Hill, right next to the Capitol. Uh, very cool neighborhoods. Obviously historic, these neighborhoods were, were built during the silver rush, not gold rush, of Denver. So you have all these old you know, Victorian mansion homes that more recently have been cut into a lot of apartments. So you'll see detached homes that in actuality are two, three, four unit apartments. So a ton of apartments, ton of condos, ton of townhomes, yeah, between Cap Hill and Uptown, but you're right in the heart of the city. Uh, within these communities, you have multiple walkable strips with all of your coffee shops, restaurants, bars, things to do. You're close to all of the amenities of Denver. Uh, and again, you're right in the heart. So, you know, you're, you're seeing a lot of, you know, high density, you know, a lot of people, a lot of traffic, uh, but you have your, your the walkability to the parks and restaurants, as we mentioned. Uh, you've got some really cool living situations that you can get into there. And if you want city living, those are gonna be my top two options as far as that. Now, second, if I wanna live, uh, I still wanna have some urban vibe to where I live, but I want a little more suburban than that. Perfect world, I am living in the Highlands and Sloan's Lake, which is located uh, just west of downtown Denver. Uh, the Highlands starts basically just as you cross I-25, and the Highlands will stretch up to Sheridan Boulevard, and Sloan's Lake is, uh, parts of it touch the Highlands. So these two areas are very interchangeable. I've said it in multiple videos, I'll say it here. The Highlands is my absolute favorite neighborhood in all of Denver. I think it gives you, uh, especially if you can afford it, the Highlands is not cheap, but if you can afford it, it gives you the best mix between uh, the city living, and you are right there next to downtown, but the city living of its own amenities along with a suburban vibe to it. It's got great homes, townhomes, apartments, condos, beautiful detached homes. It's got great shops and cafes and places you can go to. Some of the, my absolute favorites, Forest Room 5, Avanti's, a happy camper, great hangout spots, terrific restaurants. It's got multiple areas because the Highlands is pretty sizable. It's large. So 
you know, you can go to, to several different neighborhoods where it will have, its, again, its own bars, its own restaurants, its own ice cream shops. I'm a big ice cream person. So, uh, you know, you're, you're going to have Little Man Ice Cream. I got to mention Little Man every time I talk or Sweet Cow. And Sweet Cow, I'm going to tell you, if you watch this video, bring back my oatmeal cookie ice cream. I need it. But the island is going to be great for that. Sloan's Lake is going to be a, a bit more suburby. You're still right there next to the city. Uh, Sloan's Lake itself is an amazing park to go and hang out in. One of the, the bigger bodies of water we have anywhere near Denver. It's only a couple miles around, but for Denver, it's a big body of water. Uh, I myself lived in Sloan's Lake. I'm still within 10 minutes of it, but Sloan's Lake was home for my first 10 years or so back in Denver. I only moved away from it to get a house with a little more size, but Sloan's Lake, Highlands, uh, amazing places where, again, now you're not in the city, but you're close enough to where you still have low urban vibe to it. Uh, you have easy access to mountains, you have easy access to downtown, you get kind of the best of both worlds, and a lot to do within those communities. Rolling right along, because I told you we're not gonna get into these technicalities, median price this, median price that. The next is if I want something that uh, again, still has uh, kind of an, uh, an urban vibe to it, or it's really close to downtown, but I still want a little more suburby, but I still want some walkability. I still want like a strip that I could really hang out and enjoy, and that is Platt Park. Now, I will say this. I've said for a long time, the Highlands is my favorite neighborhood. Platt Park is a place that I, I didn't know a whole lot about. Man, before I started making these videos about a year and a half ago, I really didn't know that area very well. And now I'm there quite often and it's one of my absolute favorite. Now, Platt Park obviously within it has a, a park called Platt Park, but it also has two of the best strips of road that you're gonna find. One, you have South Broadway, very cool strip with some great restaurants, some great bars, nicer places and dives galore. It's fantastic. And then you have uh, Pearl Street. So there is a Pearl Street in Boulder that's extremely popular and walkable. And then you have Pearl Street in Platte Park filled with, again, I say cafes, restaurants, boutique shops, mom and pop places, uh, really cool history, old school buildings, a sweet cow, because again, I gotta mention ice cream whenever I can. Uh, there's just a lot to do along Platte Park, and it's got you know these great homes, you know, bungalows, tutors, places that have been around for a hundred years, some of them. So uh, a very excellent community, a bit more suburban than a Highlands, uh, probably similar in suburb vibe to uh, a Sloan's Lake, I'd say a bit more suburb, but again, you can get to the city very quickly. You, I mean, you could be in downtown Denver in five to 10 minutes. You could be to the mountains, you have quick highway access, uh, you have quick access to uh, 6th Avenue, which will get you to the mountains. So you could get up to the mountains in 25, 30 minutes, and within it, you have just this great community. So Platte Park, again, probably my second, I mean, I feel bad saying, I mean, I think Sloan's Lake is number two. I think it's Highlands for me, one, Sloan's two, Platte Park three, but I mean, Platte Park is pretty cool. And another aspect of Platte Park, I'm not gonna go into depth in it, but Platte Park is really close to Wash Park. Uh, Wash Park is one of, if not the most popular parks in the Denver metro area for people to hang out. That community is amazing. It's also among, not that these others are cheap, but it's among the most expensive areas in Denver. So I didn't really wanna cover it in this video, but Wash Park is definitely a place that you're gonna to wanna to go and at least check out that park, walk around it, uh, enjoy it, it's gorgeous. So now I've got my downtown living, uh, I've got my urban suburban living, I've got my getting a little more suburby. So now what if I don't wanna live in the city? What if I wanna have to drive 15, 20 minutes or more to get into Denver? What if I want more suburb? Well, I'm a homer. So the first one I'm gonna tell you is Lakewood, Colorado, which is where I live. That is 15 to 20 minutes west of Denver, straight up uh, 6th Avenue, heading west. We are on the Front Range. So Lakewood borders Denver on our east and we border the Rocky Mountains. We border Golden, Morrison, and the Rocky Mountains to our west. What I love about Lakewood is that it gives you a balance. It kind of caters to your different living styles. If you want to get down to Denver, you can be there very quickly. If you want to go to eat, we want to go to a sporting event, a concert, what have you, we can be there quick. If we want to get to the mountains, again, I can jump in my truck and I can be to the mountains 
in 20 minutes, uh, even with traffic, maybe 25 minutes. Uh, the downfall, the, the negative, if you will, about Lakewood uh, is that there really isn't a downtown area. We don't, we don't have even a little teeny downtown. Uh, right across from me or nearby is a place called Belmar that does, it's an outdoor walking mall with restaurants and shops and all that good stuff. So I have that there if I want it within driving distance but I wouldn't call Belmar a downtown. So that's the one negative of Lakewood. But as far as suburbs, uh, it's close to Denver, close to the mountains. I call it home. That's why if we're talking straight, I wanna live in suburbs, Lakewood is going to be near the top. Next up is north, uh, northwest of Denver and north of Lakewood, and that is Broomfield. So Broomfield is very popular uh, for a couple reasons. One, it's about 40 minutes roughly from Denver, maybe 30 if you're not dealing with traffic. Uh, and then it's another, again, 30 to 40 minutes, depending on traffic, from Boulder. So Broomfield gives you a nice mix in between. Uh, another very popular thing about Broomfield is that it has just about any type of living situation you want. What do I mean by that? It's got beautiful detached homes in all sorts of different types. New builds, homes that have been around for years, you know, places that are a bit more run down to brand new and spectacular. It's got townhomes, apartments. It's got different communities that you can explore. Uh, and, and again, many of them, I would kind of compare it to Belmar here where there's the walkability factor. You can go to your parks, your shops, your restaurants. Uh, Broomfield, like Lakewood, shares in the fact that it doesn't have uh, a dedicated downtown area. Um, and, and again, I'm a big fan of that. I've said that in, uh, I always I always mention other videos, just in case you watch those other videos. I do like towns that have a downtown feature. The next one I'm gonna talk about has one of those. But Broomfield and Lakewood don't. They instead have certain areas of town you can go to, like Flatirons Mall, uh, that you can go to where you'll have walkability and different things to do. Broomfield also has some great golf courses to it, um, and it's pretty spread out. So Broomfield is not just a, a, a city or town, it's also its own county, uh, really, really widespread, a lot of different uh, places to explore. And again, kind of you know, reminding you where I started, the fact that you can get down to Denver in a reasonable period of time, you can get to Boulder, obviously a very popular place to go, uh, from Broomfield, very easy to get to the mountains, and coincidentally, also very convenient to get to the airport. That's just a random thing, but if you're looking for suburbs, Broomfield is a great place to take a look at. Now, kind of going you know, completely opposite, you have Broomfield up here northwest of Denver, now looking southeast is Parker, Colorado. Now, Parker is, I mean, roughly 40 minutes from downtown Denver. Uh, could be a little less with no traffic, could be a little more with traffic. Main thing is the fact that you have to take Parker Road for the most part, uh, and that's a service road. So you're doing 45, 50 miles an hour. There are lights, you know, if traffic's backed up, things of that nature, it could take you a lot longer to get out there. Uh, Parker is south of Aurora. And, and I'll tell you, um, you know, I mentioned Platte Park earlier being a community that I didn't know a lot about and I've learned more about recently. Same thing with Parker. Started making these videos, driving out to Parker, visiting it more, going to see friends there more. Parker's a very cool community. Uh, I think it gives a lot of variety. It's a, it is a big, in my opinion, uh, kind of a, a big family community. There, there's a ton of parks. You see kids playing baseball. You see kids out on their bike. Uh, but you know, Parker also has a downtown area, which I, again, big fan of. Uh, it's small downtown, has a lot of different festivals, Parker days and October fests and Halloween uh, trunk or treat days and all of these different things for the community. Um, I think it's good for a variety. I mean, anybody could live in Parker, but you definitely get a, a Leave it to Beaver vibe. And I'm not even aging myself because Leave it to Beaver was on well before my time, um, but you just kind of see it. Certainly great. In, in all all months of the year, but there's something about getting out there on a sunny summer day when just people are out and about. Uh, they have some great parks, uh, great uh, horse horse ranches or, or equestrian areas. I noticed that in several of their parks where there's people out, you know, riding their horses and enjoying that. So Parker, and and I'll say this, you know, Lakewood close to Denver, you know, so you're you're suburbs, but you're close to city. Uh, Broomfield. You know, you're close enough to a couple of these cities. Parker, you're suburb. You are suburb. You're not making a trip to Denver unless, you know, it's work 
or it is something specific. But I, I don't see very many people, as an example, leaving Parker to go downtown Denver to eat. You know, maybe a special occasion. But you know, I, I, I get the feeling, and, and from talking to enough people that live in Parker, that when you live in Parker, most of what you do and most of your time spent is in Parker. But there's a lot, a lot to like about it, so that's probably why. Now, I wanted to add a couple bonuses, and these are places that, you know, yes, where, where I would live, and it's funny because I couldn't imagine not living where I live, but uh, two very popular areas that I just want to make sure I throw out there and not forget is the Southlands area of Aurora. So uh, if you're looking at E470 uh, heading, heading east, E470 uh, goes from heading east to west and then curves and starts heading north up towards the airport. So right as it starts to make that curve is an area, uh, the Southlands Mall is there, very, again, very walkable outdoor place with restaurants and all that. And there are several communities within that, Towns Reach, South Shore, Blackstone, um, really cool areas. Uh, a lot of amenities, Aurora Reservoir is out there as well, which is a, uh, a reservoir that does not allow uh, motored uh, vehicles. So no you know, boats with motors, but you can go paddle boarding, you can go swimming. Uh, so just a very cool area. Aurora is massive. So I'm not saying Aurora is one of those areas I would consider, but I would, if I was moving here and I didn't know anything else, I would look at the Southlands area of Aurora. And last, because you know so many people are going to be working in the area, uh, would be the, the Greenwood Village Centennial area south of Denver. We call it the Denver Tech Center or DTC. So DTC is part of Greenwood Village. And so Greenwood Village and Centennial, they're, they're kind of intermingled. But looking around that tech center area, there's some great housing options, uh, you know, detached townhomes, apartments, ton of condos. Uh, and there's obviously a lot of jobs in that area as well. So you have a lot of people who are working in that area and it just makes sense to live there as well. Uh, certainly a place I wanna mention for this. So there you go, really depending on what you want. Do you want some downtown? Do you want to be just kind of on the outskirts? Do you want suburbs? Do you want to be close to work? Do you want to be farther away? Uh, Denver can cover it all. And if there's more areas you want to talk about, that's a perfect opportunity to hit me up. The number and email you see on your screen, know that I am always the person answering your phone calls, answer your texts, answer your emails there when and if you need me. This is Destination Denver, Colorado. I am your host, Jimmy Everett. That was, if I was moving to Denver, Colorado in 2023, where would I live? Until I see you next time, peace.